Molten clay is relaxing. Right? Unless, unless you are the clay. And the picture that's given to us in the 18th chapter of Jeremiah is from the perspective of the clay. So let's use our imaginations this morning. Can you get on the potter's wheel and imagine that you're a lump of clay? For some of us like me, that doesn't take a lot of imagination. Think about what the relaxing experience of molding clay must feel like to the clay. If you're the clay on the wheel, then you're spinning. That's not relaxing. If you're clay in the hands of the potter, this is not relaxation. You're getting slapped and rubbed and squeezed and pulled and tugged. The potter is pounding and pressing and pushing. That's not relaxation. And that's the picture that we're given of God. God said he wants to do that for his people, to mold, to shape. That's a picture of God working. So in the passage that Kelly read to us, Jeremiah the prophet goes down and he notices that the potter has a piece of pottery in his hand and it's no good. The scripture uses the term spoiled. Some translations say marred or imperfect. The message just says it turned out badly. Hey, have you ever known anyone who just turned out badly? Have you ever been that person that just turned out badly? Imperfect, marred, spoiled is what the scripture said. So what does a potter do with this piece of pottery? This piece of, this vessel in the making that is spoiled and marred and imperfect. Does he toss it out into the garbage? No, here's the good news. God, the potter, takes the imperfect vessel. He doesn't toss it away. He begins to rework and reshape. So this is not a picture of an angry God punching away at us. This is a God who from a broken heart, read the passage, the context. This is God aching in his heart, begging his people to come back and to place themselves on the potter's wheel where he can, he can mold them back into the relationship that he so longs for with his people. Read it in the third chapter, tw verse 12, where God says, come on to me again. Come home, for I am merciful. I believe that God does his work in our lives through the circumstances of everyday living. So some of you are thinking ahead. So pastor, you're saying every time I get a speeding ticket, that's God at work. Every time I back into the neighbor's parked car, that's God doing his work, right? Is that what you're saying, pastor? Are you saying every time I get the flu, everything, something goes wrong, that's God working? And I would say, no, that's not good theology. Amazing how many people operate that way. Every bad thing that comes, you blame God. God, why are you doing this to me? I do that too, by the way. That's bad thought theology because God is revealed in Scripture as a God of good gifts. God is not the author of bad things. God is the creator of good things. So every bad thing that comes into your life is not the hand of God. But here's what I want to say to you this morning. Could it just be that when bad stuff happens, and it happens to all of us, could it be that in that moment, we are at our teachable moment? God, when I backed into the neighbor's car, that is for me a teachable moment. It's a moment when God has my undivided attention. When things are going right, I, maybe it's just me, I tend to forget. I tend to lose focus. When everything is rosy, I tend to sort of fade away. But when things are going wrong, man, God has my undivided attention. It is a teachable moment. So God doesn't send the bad thing, but God can do his work during the bad thing. 
This is my suggestion to you this morning. God is not the author of the bad, but he can do his work in our lives during the challenging, pounding, pressing moments of life. Now, some of you have gone ahead to the 11th verse, and you're sitting there wondering, what does this mean when God says, I'm shaping evil against you? Read it for yourself, Jeremiah 18, 11. Another translation says, I'm forming disaster for you. This is God. This is the word of God that comes from the prophet to God's people. And I would love to have that conversation with some of you this week to, to talk about what does that mean that God is forming evil against his own people. That's what the scripture said. We'll get into that later. But for this morning, what I want to tell you is this. God, even in this case, was not out to destroy his people. He was out to renew his people. Not to destroy, to renew. In fact, even in exile, even in exile, when the Babylonians came in and conquered the southern kingdom in 587 and hauled the elite off into captivity in Babylon, even there was God still with them, yes. Remember your Bible stories of Daniel in the lion's den? Did God stay with Daniel in the lion's den? That was in Babylonia. That was after this prophetic word had come to pass and God had brought evil through a foreign power to his people to conquer the kingdom and carry them away as slaves. But even there in slavery, God is with us. I'd love to have that theological conversation with you this week. But for this morning, I want to encourage you and say this, God never throws us away. Commentator said it, God never throws us away. When we place ourselves on the potter's wheel, when we submit to the pounding and the pressing and the squeezing, God's restorative work in our lives, when we do that, God is not trying to get rid of us. He's not trying to throw us away. He's not trying to destroy us. He's trying to rework us from a vessel that was bad, not useful, to a vessel that is designed and crafted according to His will. Our imperfections give God a chance to do His work in our lives. How many of you are willing to place yourself on the potter's wheel? As we come to this table this morning, my prayer is that you would be of that spirit. You don't come here because you're perfect. You don't come here because you deserve to be at this table. You come, you come humbly, confessing your sin, asking God to continue His work of restoring and correcting and shaping and molding. My prayer is that you'll come to the table this morning with that heart.